Hello friends, Tanya here with a video featuring Trinity Stamps, the Forest Birch Layering Stencil. We're going to create four cards with this one stencil. I'm using a red, an orange, and a yellow Distress Oxide here. I am trying to start with just what ink is on my sponge, my sponges for these mini ink blending tools. These sponges do hold a lot of ink, even if you haven't just used your ink pad. And I am liking this blend, but I need a little more intensity. I am going to pull out the uh, ink pads. I think I have candied apple here and spiced marmalade and mustard seed. And I'm going to use those to create an inked background to put behind the layered birch stencils that I'm going to use. Just getting a good coverage. This is a, I believe this is a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna add some extra love to it with some water and some liquid watercolors in red, orange, and yellow to add some fun uh, texture to the background of this card. So now I'm gonna pull out the uh, stencil set that we're going to use. And apparently I got the name wrong. It's Birch Forest Layering Stencil. And I'm going to use a couple of Ink on Three inks. This is the Twiggy Brown and Paint It Black. Now I am having to work at this a little bit. Maybe I've re-inked at this point for this particular stencil. I know that when I first started using this stencil, I went a little crazy. I made several backgrounds with this, with different ink blended backgrounds and some of them on plain white. And you'll see some of those that I created on this um, video. And the reason I use a larger piece of cardstock is it's way easier to handle all of the pieces. I can um, prevent my fingers from getting totally inky. Now my current favorite method to use this layering stencil to create some depth with the forest is I do a heavy application with one layer of the stencil of the ink that I'm using. Then I use a light application of the same ink. <clears throat> and then I choose one darker color for the last layer. And when I first started playing with this stencil, my ink pads were pretty dry and I had to work pretty hard to get the color that I wanted. Once I re-inked the stencils, boy, how did that make a difference? Now this last layer, I'm going to use the Paint It Black. And I did try using the Pixie Spray on these, but it left a residue. So um, I tried to wash it off. Well, I got most of it off, but it's still on this stencil. Okay, this is where I re-inked my Paint It Black. I had been struggling with getting that ink on the paper. And after I re-inked it, I had enough ink on my sponge here to pretty much do the entire stencil. <laughs> so if you find you're struggling to get the level of ink that you want, um, try re-inking your pads. A little ink pad maintenance goes a long way. I do wipe off the ink on the stencil before I pull it off, just to avoid some accidental inking anywhere. I really like the Paint It Black, the fact that it has a warm tone to it. Now I'm pulling out the stitched, slimline stitch panels die. And this is the second to largest, I believe, of the stitched panels. And I'm die cutting a panel with that. And then I'm taking out the Trinity Stamps Forest Friends Stamp and Die Set. Now I believe these stamps and dies are on the clearance rack. So if you don't have them and you love them, get them while you can. Um, I am stamping these twice because I want to be able to have a couple of each of these images to mix and match and use on multiple projects. I did stamp a lot of these different leaves and cut and colored all of them. 
off screen with my Copic markers. My plan is to use them on a full panel shake shaker card and to have these leaves be the primary shakers. If you don't want to have gobs of different shaker elements, you can just use small image stamps uh, to create a bunch of shaker images or even small dies. If you just cut these with colored cardstock, it would still give that impression. Now, full panel cards, or excuse me, shaker cards are a current obsession of mine. They are super easy, and if you have been crafting for any amount of time, you have sequins and shaker bits galore with which to work, and never enough shaker cards to uh, make it happen. And I don't like the bulk of shaker cards. That's really funny coming from me since I really like to add dimension to my cards, but I don't like the way dimension is added with shaker cards. This solves that problem for me. Now I'm taking each one of these little colored and die cut images and sliding them into the uh, full panel shaker here. I want to make sure that they are all uh, right side up. That's why I'm taking the care to do each of these individually. If you slid them in from your Trinity tidy tray, they might flip and that would be a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. Now I'm taking some glass slipper sequins and some gold sequins from my stash and I'm going to add those to the shaker pocket also. Oops. <laughs> And I am going to create a mix of my own. I don't want a lot of sequins in here. I, again, I really want those die cut leaves and acorns to be the focus of the, this shaker. I am trimming the edges off of these corners to, just to reduce the bulk. And there is our finished panel. I am going to add a piece of cardstock cut with the same stitched die and going to adhere that to the back. You wouldn't really have to do this. This was one of the first full panels that I did and um, I just felt I needed to do it. I did take a sentiment from the Supporting Scripts Sentiment stamp set and stamped that with the same black ink and die cut it with one of the mini stitched mini slimline panels, one of the smaller dies. Now I'm using one of the A7 um, modern embossed layers to die cut that um, panel. Whoa, I think we've moved on to card number two. The first one was done and now we have card number two here. I am going to create a five by seven card with this bold, big and bold sentiments stamp set to create a background it's a subtle background. It's not um, going to be the main focus of this card. I'm just taking gobs of these different sentiments, lining them up on this six and a half by three and a half inch card. Actually, this is probably bigger than that because I think I die cut it after this. This large panel of cardstock that will be die cut down to six and a half by four and a half inches. And I'm kind of planning where these stamps need to go in order to cover my whole panel without having to do any repeat stamping. These sentiments are fantastic for that. Um, and they don't show up so boldly on this cardstock that they make this a specifically themed card. The sub sentiments or the sentiments that you put on the front of the card on the actual main image panel are going to really create that for you. So I've got those all centered on my card stock and I'm going to make sure they are all lined up appropriately, have my magnet in there to keep the paper in place, pick those all up on the lid of my Misty and I'm going to take the same Distress Oxides that I ink blended the other panel or card with and I am going to create a gradient up the card panel with these um, sentiments. I'm going to start out with I actually think that's crackling campfire. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and then next, I think it is spiced marmalade or carved pumpkin. Maybe that one's carved pumpkin. And then uh, mustard seed. That one is definitely mustard seed. It's such a bright and cheery yellow. And it actually so shows up pretty well on this orange cardstock. 
that's one of the benefits of distress oxides because they are kind of opaque and lay on top of the cardstock instead of soaking in. Now I am taking some of the Ink on 3 Atelier ink refills that I keep in this little tray or this little palette so I can use them for watercoloring and spattering however I would like. I decide I don't want either the red or the pink that is on this particular palette and decide to use the Hydracolor um, shimmery watercolor paints that I got from Trinity Stamps to add the yellow or the gold spatter on this one. And a little bit goes a long way. Now that I have that all inked and spattered, I'm going to die cut this with the modern embossed 5x7 or A7 dies and center my image, which I've already die cut also. I add a little car, uh, excuse me, coaster blanks to the back of that panel. And I'm going to do the same with the next panel. I'm just going to center that on the middle of the card here. And then I'm going to take my Copic colored and die cut elements that I created earlier on, which I laid out and used some press and seal to keep it the way I wanted it. And I'm going to adhere those to the card front. I'm going to pull out the supporting script sentiments again and add a sentiment and some more of those leaves. I had gobs left from um, the previous project. And I'm going to add this wishing you a very which I die cut. Nope, I just trimmed that one out <laughs> with my uh, paper trimmer. And I'm going to put that sentiment on and then I need to adhere all of these little leaves that we're going to scatter all over. I really like that feeling that that creates with these fall leaves. There are some bright green ones, some yellow, some orange, and some red that really bring that whole fall palette into play. I'm using my pickup stick to help along with a rever reverse tweezer to get these placed just exactly the way I want. Some of the leaves I created were not whole leaves, but that's perfect for this particular panel. I just line the cut edge up with the edge of the panel and they fit in there perfectly. Going to tuck a couple more on and we're going to add this acorn on top of one of these pumpkins. And in the inside of the card, I am, oh, nope, almost forgot. We're going to add some topaz twinkle rhinestone gems from Trinity's embellishment shop. Just going to add a little, little bit of Barely Art Precision Glue. And I am such a, in such a habit of having the glue in my left hand and the picker in my right hand that when you change that up. When I change that up, then I'm putting glue on the top of my rhinestone. <laughs> um, just going to add those little gems all over to add a little extra punch of fun to that card front. Now I happen to have this two side open stamp positioner um, in my stash and I really like that for adding details to the insides of cards that are too big to put in my regular size Misty. Now, if you have the 12 by 12 Misty, that would work with this also. Um, I believe the Tim Holtz stamping platform has two sides that are open, and this happens to be the Stampin' Up, um, oh, what's it called, Stamparatus? Anyway, it, however you decide, you could even do this freehand, you could line this up carefully and get this gradient look or just stamp it once with a uh, acrylic block. There are lots of ways you can do this. I personally just like to use the tools that I have in my stash. I love the way that supporting script plays so well with the large ones. Now I did do a couple more cards using that same uh, stencil. This one I did some gray background with the brown and black trees added some embossed with um, glow-in-the-dark embossing powder skeletons from the Shake Your Bones and die cut those with the coordinating dies and added a sentiment. 
This one has that same style background. It's another full panel shaker card. And again, using the uh, Forest Friends and the little Trinity tea die. Um, this, the last four months, I believe, um, we've been getting a little die with our orders over $100. So watch for those in your orders. And these are the last two cards that I created that I showed the entire process. I didn't think you needed to want, see all of this stenciling again. And um, so I just included the pictures. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, now's a great time to do that. There are clickable links in the description box for all of the products I used today. And here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Until next time, bye-bye.